Hi, I'm Patu from Free Fincal. Today, let's talk about what return can we expect from a 10-year equity mutual fund SIP. This is a question asked by a reader. Now, the reader says that uh, he wants to continue the SIP for 10 years uh, and uh, he later clarified that he has no other in investment. So that uh, right away is a red flag right there. There is no asset allocation here. 100% equity is uh, an extremely risky proposition. We'll get to that. Now, so uh, within the equity part, let, let's say you have an asset allocation with equity and fixed income. And if you ask within uh, from the equity part, excuse me, from the equity part, what return can I expect? And the honest answer uh, one can give is assume, assuming there is no conflict of interest is that we don't know what return we're going to get. It can be just about anything. So if you look at the 10 year SIP rolling returns. So every dot in this picture is a 10 year SIP rolling return of the nifty 50 total returns index. And you can see that uh, from the time that we have the data uh, available that is from 1999. Um, you can see that the returns have ranged from uh, to 23 to 22% uh, and the lowest has been, uh, uh, you know, uh, March 23rd, uh, 2020. That's that, that's where it plummeted to about the four three and a half percent or something like that and then it moved up again so it can be just about anything we don't know we you can sit down sit and dream about 15 percent 12 percent 10 percent etc the market will give what it gives so that is the reason why i keep saying that our strategy our investment strategy should not depend on returns it should depend on asset allocation and it should depend on having a target corpus and at any point in time, our uh, the, our actual corpus should be close to the target corpus and moving in the right direction. As long as that is happening, it doesn't matter what your portfolio return is going to be. So um, you can see that when the market crashes, the uh, returns crash and then it uh, when the market moves up, it moves up. So the SAP and lump sum beyond a point, there's really no difference. I've talked about this several times. So expecting you know investing in a, i would say i'm uh, saying that uh, i'm going to invest in a, a, a equity mutual fund via sip for 10 years 15 years what return can i expect makes uh, uh, that's not really a strategy that's hope what you need is a first of all you need asset allocation so the question is how much equity will you recommend for ex for a goal that is exactly 10 years right? i need money in exactly 10 years now uh, today a need that is 10 years away is not going to remain 10 years away all the time. Just like that, it will become 5 years away, 6 years away, 4 years away. So you, you cannot be holding too much equity. Now, I would recommend um, not holding more than 40% um, equity even for experienced investors. For general retail investors with with little or no experience in uh, equity, the robo advisory tool we have recommends about 30% uh, asset allocation in equity for the first few years, and then it generally, uh, sorry, then it gradually sorry, tapers down to zero uh, percent as we head to uh, the 10-year deadline, and the fixed income gradually tapers up. So once you have a, um, a, a variable asset allocation like this. The expected return is not one number because the because the asset allocation is changing, the return will also keep changing. In fact, the return will gradually fall down because the equity allocation is falling down. What is more important for you is to is to recognize your target corpus and understand that every after every year when you review your portfolio, every, let's say in December or June or whenever you review it once a year your corpus should be close to what the actual corpus is that is all that matters so uh, we should get rid of this idea of expecting something from equity of course for making a plan you need some number i i don't uh, uh, deny that uh, yes you can start with nine percent post-tax equity returns or ten percent pre-tax equity returns or even post-tax whatever it is nine to ten percent is what I would recommend going forward because uh, so many things are happening, our interest rates are falling down, the volatility in the market has come down. So you cannot expect too much returns also from the market. So uh, 9 to 10% is enough because the fixed income is also going to fall down proportionally. Inflation also has come down to some extent from what it was 15-20 years ago. So 
you have to expect something yes i mean in the sense that you have to put a number down and for planning but what matters after you start investing is not that return because that return is going to keep fluctuating what matters is whether you are investing enough and whether your corpus is on the right track so that's uh, why i keep talking about having uh, a systematic risk management strategy in addition to systematic investing